there uh, in the offering, but uh, fortunately he left a few words for me to say as well. <laughs> Psalm 103, <clears throat> there was a, a group of climbers that were climbing Mount Everest when they came across a uh, climber who is unconscious. They tried to drag her, but could only get a short distance. And uh, they were exhausted, so they offered a Sherpa. They each offered $5,000 to a Nepalese Sherpa if he would help them to uh, take her to safety. He agreed. They were able to save this woman's life, and their expectation was she would be so grateful to have her life saved that she would repay them the $10,000. But in fact, when she got better, she refused to pay. One of these men was very angry about that. He said, I'm angry. I want to know why she won't pay. But the other climber said these words, saving her is our choice. Gratitude is hers. Those are two separate things. That's very wise words. Saving us is God's choice. Gratitude should be ours. And the, the scripture that we're going to read is a famous psalm of gratitude in, in which David lists numbers of reasons why we should be thankful. And we do this especially at Thanksgiving. Hopefully it's not a once a year thing for you, but... Uh, we're going to read Psalm 103. We'll take the time to read verse 1 through 14. I want to preach about blessing the Lord. The Bible says, verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. Blessing the Lord. I want to begin and look, first of all, at the deliberate reflection. Our text gives us a command that is actually a warning, forget not. Do not forget all of the Lord's benefits. To forget means to not be in, in your mind. It's something that you, it's not in your mind because you can't see it. And we are commanded to not forget because we do have a tendency to forget. Deuteronomy 8.11, be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. Why do people forget good things? Number one, because of brain science. There's something in the way our brains work. Negative things stick in our memories more than positive ones. You can go to a restaurant and have 50 delicious meals in a row, but see one cockroach. <laughs> and you don't go 50 to one, ah. <laughs> cockroach hotel, I will never go there again. It sticks, that's, that's just the reason why people tend to remember bad more than good. Pride is another reason. Deuteronomy 8, 17, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands has produced this wealth for me. This is the amazing thing is that as God begins to bless us, now we begin to take credit. I'm so smart. I work so hard. I'm so talented. But the question is, who gave you that ability? The smarts, the talent, the strength. And then, of course, people forget because of mental and spiritual laziness. 
It really does take work to remember forgetfulness and ingratitude is unhealthy for us. It makes you unhappy. According to a recent uh, poll on happiness, only one in three Americans report being very happy. And the Bible predicted this. 2 Timothy 3, verse 2, in the last days, men will be unthankful. You know what unthankfulness does is it opens the door to hell. Philippians 4, if you read, there's a positive side of thankfulness. The Bible says that the peace of God will guard, will stand guard over your heart and your mind. Ingratitude makes people vulnerable. Do you know every backslider is ungrateful? Somewhere along the line, God saved them. They did it. Yeah, but somebody looked at me funny. Backsliders are ungrateful. Rebels are ungrateful. Adulterers are ungrateful because it opens the door. It's dangerous. And unthankfulness displeases God. Numbers 11.1, 1, when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. So this is why David writes and he says, forget not, do not forget you need to bless the Lord, but don't forget his benefits. We have to focus our memory. Psalm 103 is a list. We read all 14, or 14 of the verses there. It is a lengthy list, and it's a broad list. It, 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 it tells of who God is, uh, uh, what he has done for us personally, what he's done for the nation. In Deuteronomy 8.18, you shall remember the Lord your God. The word remember means to make a mark so that you can recognize. To remember, to forget not, means that you deliberately pay attention to. And the Bible says that you need to pay attention to who God is and his benefits. God built this into relationship with them. The children of Israel, they had set times during the year. They, were, they called them feasts, but literally they were times in which they were supposed to sit and deliberately remember. We read of both Moses and Joshua that they spoke to the people and they rehearsed the history. Let's talk about what God has done for us. In one instance, they wrote it out because this is what people need to do. That's what we need to do. Regularly, we need to think about and list things to be grateful for. Any of you that are having trouble sleeping you know it's from hell when you can't sleep the devil reminds you of every kind of bad thing is uh, uh, I, I make it a habit if ever I can't sleep I have jet lag uh, uh, frequently God helps me I sleep very well but if I can't instead of laying there thinking about all the things that irritate me I will mentally lay there and go down the list of my life thanking God for good things the devil helps me to sleep because he doesn't want me to be grateful. <laughs> and then, of course, seasonally, this is actually what Thanksgiving is for. Thanksgiving is not for Black Friday sales. Thanksgiving is not for overeating, although we will do that and we'll repent on Friday. But the roots of this, you know that in 1621, grateful pilgrims, they thank God they had a a modest harvest that enabled them to not starve to death. And so they set aside time. We need to thank God we're in this new land and we're going to have religious freedom. And our first president, George Washington, established our first national day of prayer and thanksgiving. November 26, 1790 was a day he proclaimed of official thanksgiving for the many single favors of Almighty God. Let's talk about benefits. David is listing. He is literally going through in his own life 
and he's thinking about the nation, the group as a whole, and he gives us some healthy categories of thankfulness. Number one, we should be thankful for God's personal benefits. He lists some here. God forgives. He heals. How many of you God has ever healed your body before? That is one of the things David uh, writes down. Redeemed from destruction. That can be that uh, uh, it might be that when you got saved, all the things that would have happened to you. Sometimes it is the things that God saved you from physically. I was looking through, searching through the thousands of photos that I uh, have on my computer and I was searching for photos for the Memorial Stone series and I came across the car that I was driving in South Africa when someone pulled next to me on the freeway and shot a gun right at my head and the bullet bounced. That, that's one of those, I said, God, I, I thank God. I don't think Honda Civics are that strong to withstand bullets, but God, you preserved my life. And then there's blessings that David speaks about, family, job, health, material benefits. So personal benefits we should thank God for. Corporate, Revelation, verse seven, verse seven, he made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. It's fascinating. I started what I thought would be just a couple of weeks of telling a little bit of stories of our history, the memorial stones. It has grown and everywhere I go, people say they are watching it. It is helping them because it is reminding us how good God is that he gave the vision to Pastor Mitchell uh, and that has blessed all of us in salvation. We thank God for corporate revelation. We thank God for his justice. Verse six, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. I wanna tell you, God is a righteous judge. And sometimes he steps in. He, of course, is much slower than we would like. We would like before service is out for God to finish his justice. But nonetheless, God repays those who have been mistreated. He gives good things to make up for. He deals with evil people. We should thank God for his justice. And we should be thankful in this text for God's character. Verse 8, the Lord is... Now, this is not what he's done. It's who he is. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. Here, here are three powerful things about God's character. Number one, the Bible says he is full of mercy. Mercy means God does not give us what we deserve. How many of you can say that's a very good thing? Oh, God, thank you that you don't give us actually what we deserve. The second thing, it says that he is gracious. Not only does he not give us what we should get, he does give us what we sh shouldn't get. We don't deserve it, and he blesses all the same. And thirdly, the Bible says God is patient. God gives people time to repent. He gives people time to change. And so this is why David is listing these things. He is mentally going down the list and saying, we have so much to be thankful for. It's said that a radio DJ was practicing at home for his upcoming show. His daughter, a young daughter, had heard him uh, going over and over again and all the things that he would say on the show. That night when they're having dinner, he asked his young daughter to pray and bless the food. And she said, ladies and gentlemen, this food is brought to you today by the Lord God Almighty. <laughs> Which is actually what David is saying, isn't it? Is everything we have, we thank God it came from God. Look at one more thought. Let's talk about blessing the Lord. It's not enough to know it. It's not enough to have it in here. Our text says thankfulness must be expressed. Verse 1, bless the Lord, O my soul, 
and all that is within me, bless his holy name. The word bless means, first of all, to kneel. That is an attitude. You, you are saying, oh God, you are incredible. That's an attitude. But then the word bless means you say it. If you have an attitude of thankfulness on the inside, all through the Bible, the Bible says that Moses blessed the people, he didn't just stand before him and go. <laughs> he said it because blessing involves your mouth. It is so unhealthy when people cannot say words of appreciation or do not say words of appreciation. I counsel marriages and one of the very simple questions that I ask couples is, yeah, I know you. That she rides a broom and he's the Antichrist, but do you ever say thank you? Tell me something good about your husband. Tell me something good about your wife. I can't think of anything. You are in deep, dark trouble. Salvation. As a pastor, I get a very different view of the service than you do because I get to see everybody. It is very unhealthy whenever I see that there are people who don't sing, they don't clap, they don't raise their hands, they don't praise the Lord. I go, oh Lord, they're in trouble because it's very, very unhealthy. You have to have gratitude in your heart, but it has to come out. The outflow of thankfulness means that we need to express it to God in worship. Verse 1, bless the Lord. Psalm 107, verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How dare you be saved and healed and delivered and blessed and not sing it, not clap it, not say it out loud. Luke 17, 15, and 16, one of the lepers, when he saw he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God, fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. So if you are grateful to God, first of all, you need to express it in worship. And then thankfulness and gratitude needs to be expressed to other people. You owe people. You owe people who prayed for you, witnessed to you, have been patient uh, uh, with you, have helped you and blessed you in different ways. Therefore, you should tell them. Say it with your mouth. Write it in a note. Send them a text. Let a carrier pigeon bring a message. Some way, let them know it. Because they might need it, but it is so healthy, it needs to be expressed. Think about this as we close. Think about the circle of gratitude. It's not an accident. David, who is incredibly blessed, is very thankful because it's a circle. God blesses, we thank so he blesses more. It's not an accident that thankful people, you know, ungrateful people often spend their life resenting, how come they got a pay raise and why did they get a new car? Because they're not ungrateful. When God sees grateful hearts, there's something there that God wants to return benefits to them. I close with this story. There's a lady, Lin Tai Tui Spearing, a Vietnamese lady. Her parents and her three young brothers, they were among over a thousand people crammed onto two fishing boats at, that they fled Vietnam near the end of the Vietnam War. They were absolutely crammed into a, a flimsy boat without food and without water. 
Lynn said we were lost at sea for days. When in May of 1979, they were picked up by a British ship, the SS Sibonga. Forty years later, the family and uh, uh, numbers of their Vietnamese friends were, were talking about how their lives are different. They're living in England. They have blessed lives. And so they tracked down the captain of the SS Sabonga, Captain Healy Martin. Mrs. Spearing and her family, along with some other refugees, flew to Northern Ireland on the 40th anniversary of their rescue to visit Captain Martin and thank him personally. He's in a care home. They, and she said, we got to see him as a family and say thank you. I wanted him to see his legacy. They began to tell them now of all the children and grandchildren that had been born, began to tell them how numbers of them are doctors and lawyers, how their lives had been blessed incredibly in this new land in England. And they said, we wanted him to see how he helped so many people to have new beginnings. Mrs. Spearing's brother, Tuan Le, who was just four months old at the time of the rescue, he added this, we wanted to pay back what was given to us, which was the opportunity. We actually have a video of this, and I want you to see this, of the family. Praise God. That is a wonderful. Amen. If they could do that for a human being, how much more should we do that for Almighty God? I have a lot to be thankful for, and I am really thankful. That should be at Thanksgiving, enjoy time with family, eat more than is fitting. <laughs> So says the Pope, you're absolved. <laughs> but as you are enjoying yourself on this Thanksgiving time, please, we have a lot to be thankful for. And we should really be thankful. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes all across this place. Thank God. Thank God for his goodness, amen. If you are here tonight we spoke about forgiveness David said he forgives all of your sins that is the possibility that could be true for you everything you have ever done everything that fills you with guilt and shame everything perhaps that is damaging in your relationships right now and everything that separates you from a holy God and everything that ultimately will result in judgment in eternity, in hell forever, it does not have to be that way because Jesus Christ died on the cross. 
you can have what David says, it is possible that God can forgive all of your sins. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how long you've been doing things. God can forgive you tonight. That would be the most wonderful thing you could have this Thanksgiving. Not just family, not just food, but all if your sins could be forgiven. And if you're here tonight and you have never been forgiven, you've never experienced what it is like to feel clean on the inside, I want to give you an opportunity. You could pray. You don't have to pay money. You don't have to take a class. All you have to do is pray with an honest heart and God will reach down on the inside and take away your sin. You will never be judged for it. He can take away guilt and shame and can set you free from the power of sin. How many people here, that's what you need. You need forgiveness. And if you would like to pray and ask God to forgive you, I want you to do one thing while our heads are bowed. I want you, if you want to pray, lift up your hand so I can see it. Pastor Greg, I want to pray. I need Jesus all across this place. How many would there be? You'd lift up your hand. Thank you. God bless you. I appreciate your honesty. Others, you need Jesus. Lift up your hand. God loves you. He can forgive you, make you clean tonight. Others, you need God. Don't let this chance go by. Thank you. Other people are responding. God bless you. Some of you are backslidden. Do you know that God has not given up on backsliders? They know better than to go back and sin. They've done it anyway, and yet God has not given up on you. He loves you. He wants to forgive you. Can do a miracle on the inside. Others, you're backslidden. Lift up your hand right now. Pastor Greg, I want to come home. I want to get right with God tonight. I want to pray and have God forgive my sins all across this place. Anybody else? Quickly, you lifted your hand or you haven't done that yet, lift it right now and let God touch you. God wants to save you. He can do a miracle in you. Thank God. If you lifted your hand, I want you to stand up to your feet. I want you to come here. Another hand over here. I want you to get out of your seat. Come right now. I'm going to have someone pray with you. You saw who that was. You bring them. They lifted their hand. You bring them. Amen. I want you all to stand up. We're going to open the altars. If there's somebody near you that doesn't know Jesus, why don't you gently invite them, give them courage and strength so that they can pray. Amen. Let's open the altar. Some of you need to come and talk to God. You've been ungrateful or maybe you've been struggling. Problems have overwhelmed you and what you need to do is you need to come before God and say, God, but I am so thankful. I have so much to be thankful for. Thanks. Sing it one more time. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Right now, Father God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Shut up, God, I'm grateful, Lord God, for your goodness. Shut up, Thank you, Lord God, for all of your goodness. Praise the Lord. You can go back to your seats. We are going to take an offering. And um, this offering is going to be given entirely to those uh, who are in need. When we are thankful, one of the manifestations of thankfulness is that you want to bless other people, Isaiah 58, 10 says, if you feed those who are hungry and take care of the needs of those who are troubled, then your light shall shine in the darkness and you will be bright like sunshine at noon. This is built into relationship with God. The ushers can come to the front while I'm speaking. Built into having a relationship with God, I just preach about how you bless the Lord, but... Part of a thankful heart towards God is you also want to share with other people. And the Bible says, feed the hungry, take care of the needs of those who are troubled. And then, of course, we could just stop there and say, yep, because it's right. And yet, the Bible says, remember that circle thing that I said, the circle of gratitude when we return blessings to other people, the Bible says, God gets involved, your light will shine in the darkness. There's something about direction. Liberal people 
God is able to guide them. And I want to encourage you, this offering, immediately after the service, we'll begin to distribute and uh, uh, for those who are in need. But I'm encouraging you, be generous. Let's remember other people and let them be blessed and helped in their time of need. Let's bow our heads. And with our heads uh, bowed, I'm going to ask my brother, Chuck, you uh, thank God and bless the offering. Amen. God bless you as you give. They're going to sing. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It was is white as snow all oh, the blood of Jesus and oh, oh the, the blood of Jesus oh, oh the, the blood, blood of Jesus oh, oh the blood of Jesus it washes white as snow. Let's stand to our feet, sing one more time. And oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. It washes white as snow. Let's praise God one more time together. God, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, Lord God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, Lord God, for all you are and all you've done, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We're going to be dismissed. I really 